Hello, lords and ladies of winter, and welcome to my channel. Today, I will be going over my results for the Ancestry DNA kit. Now, I had originally shot a video of me opening them up for the first time, but I have since decided not to do that particular video because my youngest daughter was in it and I'm not really wanting her on the internet all like that. So, uh, that and YouTube has disabled my comments before when one of my children was in a video very briefly. So, we're just gonna avoid all that and and a uh, little bit of backstory um, going in. I knew to expect certain things. Like Roar is a is a German name. Um, people who aren't familiar with German spelling might not think that it is, but it is Middle German for reed farmer. And so I, I was expecting a fair amount of German. But um, before I go into that, um, I had started to do the whole family genealogy stuff and I found where at least the Roar side came over to America. Now, the wording, pay attention to the wording. Hey, um, my family were were part of the German Pal were like German Palestinians, I think. I'm not exactly sure what this group of people were, but I do know that my family fled from the French due to religious persecution. And they, at the time in Germany, it was very common for the male children to have the same name as they were named after the patron saint with their middle names being what distinguished them from the others. So in this particular family, there were two boys, at least two boys, both named Johannes. Now, when they fled from the French the first time, the eldest son, had gone back to get the family valuables and he was captured by the French. This Johannes ends up later escaping from the French. The document I found didn't really specify how, but it did say that he probably went along the, nor the, the normal route, which w would have been kind of almost like an underground railroad in Europe where he uh, went to England and due to the mass migration uh, during this the during this time period England was not able to accommodate all of the refu all of the refugees that they were getting and so, and um, some people were sent, stayed in England, some went to Ireland, and the others we'll get to in a moment. Um, now, this brother, book passage, um, well, was able to get passage to the colonies. Remember how I said the wording was important? Pay attention to that word. Um, so he gets passage to the colonies, he arrives he arrives in the colonies and and essentially what has happened is because his passage was not free, remember, nothing's free. Uh, he is then ser uh, sold into indentured servitude. Well, he basically gave a big F you to his owner to, to, to the man who had essentially bought him and he runs away with a wealthy 
with a wealthy woman. Now, hold that thought. Do not forget about him. The other Johannes that has been with the rest of the family, the father, uh, they end up having to flee again. And now they go, and he gets captured by the French. Well, he escapes, meets up with the rest of his family again, and they continue to flee until they get to England, where they, too, have, booked, have gotten passage to the colonies in 1728. Now, why is that wording important? Why do I keep saying the colonies? Because... This happened in 1728. The Declaration of Independence was not signed until 17, was not drafted and then signed until 1775. Just a little bit of a history lesson. Well, the Johannes that I'm descended from gets to America with his father and there, waiting for them, even though he had no idea that they were gonna be there, was his older brother even though none of them recognized him because it had been years. And I'm sure they had probably presumed him dead by now. Well, because he, the first Johannes had ran away with this wealthy, with this wealthy woman, his, uh, the elder, elder Johannes pays for his family so that they don't have to go into servitude. And since I am now here recording, you, we can kind of guess that things at least ended up decent. And that was of course in New York. We are filming here from Michigan. Now, on to my results. As I said, I knew to expect a fair amount of German. I did not know to expect this much German. Germanic Europe, 43%. Specifically in Germany itself. Oh. In, uh, England, Wales, Northern Europe, 39%. Ireland and Scotland, 11%. And finally, which is the one I thought was the most interesting because Sweden and Norway are very close to each other. So I do have 7% of some Nordic blood in Sweden. So all in all, very interesting. These are, these are places that have a very rich culture and kind of helps me out with the whole learning German thing, guten tag. Um, and also, a little bit of bragging rights, not gonna lie here, my ex-husband always had this thing where he, he could, uh, I, you know, I couldn't possibly be as German as what I said I was because my hair is not blonde and my eyes are not blue. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. A little racist on his part. A little bit. And in fact, he would often, he would often attribute me to a certain little girl who wrote in a diary and died during the Holocaust. Yeah. Yeah. Now she, uh, and yeah. He's, um, we're just not gonna dig into that pile of worms because that's got some issues all in itself. But anyway, that is the video. I know it's kind of quick, but 
I'm standing in front of the window because I have a lot of cleaning to do and my children are asleep so also why I had to uh, do this quickly and the hopes that they don't wake up while I'm doing it so I hope everyone has a wonderful day and a splendid New Year's. Tschüss, bis später.